Great Office for the Aging and SnapEd New York. Thanks for joining me today on What's Cooking with Wendy. Today, we're gonna to be making some overnight oats. And at the end, I'm gonna be showing you a bonus recipe because you know that I like to give you guys some different options. So we'll be posting the links to the recipes in the chat box. And the recipes can also be found on the New York State SnapEd website at www.snapedny.org. Now I had a request to do a demo of some breakfast recipes to demonstrate how we can add more fruits and vegetables to our breakfast meal. And that works out really well for me because I have been wanting to try overnight oats for a while. So I'm glad that I got to try this recipe out. It only has a few ingredients, so it's really, really easy. And you can make it with the ingredients that you like to tailor to your taste. I was surprised at how quickly it really came together. Well, first, let's look at the MyPlate graphic. So this recipe will be covering the fruits and vegetables section. The dietary guidelines for Americans recommend that you make half your plate fruits and vegetables. And this recipe is a great way to do that. This recipe also covers the grains section. Oatmeal is a whole grain. The dietary guidelines for Americans recommend making half of your grains whole grains. So this recipe is a great way to add more whole grains to your diet first thing in the morning. Remember that everything you eat and drink over time matters. If you want to find your healthy eating style and maintain it for a lifetime, the right mix can help you be healthier now and in the future. Now, increasing your intake of fruits and vegetables is a good idea because most Americans don't get enough fruits and vegetables every day. Eating more fruits and vegetables can help us healthy because they are lower in calories, they're full of fiber, and that helps to regulate our digestive system, and they're also full of vitamins and minerals that our bodies need. Now, whole grains have a lot of the same benefits that fruits and vegetables have. Whole grains have lots of fiber and vitamins and minerals that occur naturally in the grain. Now, when I think of breakfast, I think more about fruit than vegetables. And many people drink juice with their breakfast. So for example, four ounces of a half a cup of 100% orange juice contains a serving, that's a serving of fruit. Now, a few things to keep in mind when choosing juice is to look for 100% juice. Now there's many products on the market that are not 100% juice. So look for those words on the label. If you don't see 100% juice on the label, you might be drinking something with a lot of added sugar without the benefits of the nutrients that come with 100% juice. Also remember that juice does not have any fiber in it, whereas whole fruit does. So I just mentioned that fiber helps with digestion and it can also help us feel full longer. So that's the benefit of focusing on whole fruit instead of fruit juice to get your fruit servings for the day. And things like fiber and fruit that has, whole fruit that has a lot of water in it can also aid in weight loss or weight maintenance. So we can also add more vegetables to our breakfast by drinking something like vegetable juice, like tomato juice, or you can add some vegetables to an omelet, a frittata, or a quiche. Now, this is a great way to use up leftover vegetables from your dinner meal. So if you have some tomatoes or spinach or broccoli, peppers or onions, mushrooms, whatever you have left over, try throwing that in some eggs in the morning and add some vegetables to your morning meal. So this can help you make half your plate, fruits and vegetables at your breakfast meal. So let's start talking about the recipe a little bit. I want you to remember to wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer before you start cooking. All right, so let's look at the ingredients for the recipe. This recipe is a great way to save time because you make it ahead of time the night before. This recipe makes about four servings, so if you live on your own, you can make this recipe once and have four mornings of breakfast already done. This recipe calls for one cup of old fashioned oats. Now you can use quick oats or you can use the steel cut oats. The quick oats will give you overnight oats, sort of a little bit creamier texture. And the steel cut oats will give the overnight oats a chewier, chewier texture. The old fashioned oats give you a texture somewhere in between those two, the quick oats and the rolled oats. Now you have to try some different types to see what you like the most. You want to stay away from instant oatmeal, which usually comes in an envelope packet. You tear it open and, and usually you can 
put it in some water and put it in the microwave. Now that type of oatmeal will not hold up very well when they soak overnight. So they are not good for overnight oats and I recommend staying away from those because they'll probably most likely just turn into a bunch of mush. But let's look at the other ingredients. I have a half of a cup of low fat or fat free milk and I'm using 1% milk here and one cup of low fat or fat free yogurt. I'm using Greek yogurt there. And then when I found that I, when I used the Greek yogurt, I needed to add a little bit more milk to help the recipe uh, have a better texture. The Greek yogurt is thicker than traditional yogurt. So you can also do some experimenting on what mixture works best for you. So let's mix these things together. We're gonna add the oatmeal and the milk, and then we're gonna add the yogurt. Now I find having a rubber spatula to get all of the yogurt out really helps. So we'll do that. All right. And we just wanna mix these thoroughly in a bowl. And you can see there's, that's it. Like there's not that much to it, just those three ingredients. So, it really does come together pretty quickly. And it's something you can do the night before quickly. And then in the morning, your breakfast is gonna be all done. So that looks good. Now, once you've done that, you're gonna put it in the refrigerator for about 12 to 16 hours or overnight. And like I said, in the morning, the oatmeal will be all done and ready to eat. So a good way to make this a grab and go breakfast is to put the overnight oats in a jar. Here I have a mason jar with a lid. You can use something like that. I prefer to use the ones with the large tops on them, the wide tops. You can use a mason jar if you have them, but something like a peanut butter jar or a jam or a jelly jar that has a wide top on it, that'll work great too. I think those wide tops make it easier to sort of get the spoon in there in the morning when you're trying to get to your breakfast. Now, when choosing yogurt for the recipe, look for a low-fat or non-fat yogurt with no or low added sugars. You'll be adding fruit to this recipe, so you really don't need to put in a lot of added sugars. The fruit will add enough sweetness. Remember that added sugar is one of those things that we want to limit or avoid. For fruit, you can use any form that you have. Fresh, frozen, or dried fruit, they'll all work. You might want to add the fruit at different times depending on the form that it is. So for example, I have some golden raisins here. Dried fruit can be added when you prepare the oats the night before. If you do that, they're going to plump up a little bit and absorb some of the moisture in the mixture. Here I have some frozen mixed berries. If you use frozen fruit, you'll want to add that the night before so that it has a chance to defrost in the refrigerator overnight. You just add it into this mixture right here. And then in the morning, again, it'll be ready to go. Here, I have some canned peaches. When choosing canned peaches or canned any kind of fruit, you're gonna wanna choose or look for the options that are packed in 100% water or juice. You might find that you can add the canned fruit with the liquid that's already in it without draining it off. Or you might find that you're better off to drain the liquid off. It sort of kind of depends on if you like it a little more runny or if you like it a little bit thicker. And this I had drained off, but I, after I did that, I thought, well, maybe I, I didn't have to do that. So, you know, that's an option for you too. It's another way to sort of do some experimenting. So I also have some fresh fruit here. I have some fresh raspberries. I have some fresh strawberries that I've cut up. The fresh fruit can be added the night before or it can be added in the morning just before you eat your oatmeal, depending on what the fruit is or depending on the texture that you're looking for. If you put it in overnight, it might get a little softer and sort of mix in with the oatmeal a little more. And some people like that. And then other people like to have their, their fruit a little more whole. There are certain fruits that can brown if you cut them and then store them for a while. So certain things like um, apples or bananas, they tend to brown once they're cut. So you can wait to just add those fruits just before you eat the oatmeal in the morning, or you can coat the bananas and the apples in lemon juice or orange juice. 
the lemon juice and orange juice can help to slow down the browning process without changing the taste of the fruit very much because you're just going to be coating the fruit with the juice, sort of toss it in a bowl, and then you're going to drain off the extra juice. And that can help the sort of vitamin C and citric acid in the lemon juice and the orange juice can help to slow down the browning process and things like, like apples and bananas. So another idea to add some more flavor to your overnight oats is to add something like cinnamon, or you can add some nutmeg. That's an easy thing to do. Most of those, most people have that in our, in our uh, pantry, or you can add some extract. Uh, I have vanilla extract here, but you could try things like almond extract or lemon extract, depending on what you're gonna add to your overnight oats. And you can change up the flavors that way. And the great thing about this recipe is you can make a different version every day. So you're going to have your bowl of overnight oats that's sort of plain, but then you can add different flavors every single day and have a different breakfast every day. So for example, you can make sort of a tropical version by adding some unsweetened coconut flakes and some pineapple or mango. And then you can pretend that you were on a beach somewhere instead of driving to work. Or you can add some blueberries or strawberries or bananas. You can mix the fruits or just keep them separate. Whatever you like to make it your way and the way that you, your own tastes. So I'm gonna show you some overnight oats that I made previously. So these are overnight oats that I used uh, the quick oats to make them with. It does have a creamier texture, it's sort of more like pudding. And then this bowl, I use the old fashioned rolled oats, which has a chewier texture. The difference between the cook, quick cook oats and the old fashioned oats is the amount of processing that they have had. So quick oats have been previously steamed and then dried again. They're also then cut into smaller pieces and it, that's what speeds up the cooking process, hence the name quick oats. The old fashioned rolled oats also have been processed in that they've also been steamed and then rolled flat. The rolled oats will quick, cook more quickly than steel cut oats, which is a different thing that I'm gonna show you in just a minute. It helps, the rolling out helps to speed up the cooking process because it flattens them out a little bit, but they're not cut up into small pieces like the quick cook oats. And you can see that you might be able to see the texture is a little more chewy and chunky than the quick cook cut oats. Say that 10 times fast, quick cut oats. So here I have some uncooked, steel cut, cooked oats. Yeah, uh, this is going to be a tongue twister all day long. So the steel cut oats are the types of oats that will take the longest to cook because they are the least processed. These oats are cut into pieces, but they've not been steamed first or rolled out. So again, the steel cook, cooked oats take the longest to cook and they'll probably take the longest to soak overnight also. But if you throw them in the refrigerator and they're in there for eight or 10 hours, they're gonna be fine in the morning. These type of oats will have the chewiest texture and I haven't tried them out yet, but I am gonna try these next. I think they're gonna be really delicious. Now, I'm gonna show you the bonus recipe that I have uh, come up with here. This was also on the Snap Ed New York website. This is called a banana crumble. It's really a banana berry crumble. It has many of the same ingredients as the overnight oats. This recipe uses bananas and some type of berries. I used frozen berries because that's what I had. And then there's a crumble recipe that goes on the top that consists of oatmeal, butter, whole wheat flour, brown sugar, and cinnamon. This recipe also calls for a yogurt and honey mixture that you, it's optional, but you can put it on the top. It's a lighter version of whipped cream. So this will help you to limit your added sugars and saturated fat. So this recipe has the fruit, the oatmeal, and the yogurt in common with the overnight oats. Using the same ingredients for different recipes when you go shopping is a good way to limit the number of items that you need to buy, and it can help you to save money and cut down on food waste, as you can use some of the ingredients that you have left over from this recipe to make this recipe. So it's just a good way to sort of plan your meals ahead of time before you go shopping. 
Now, I really like that crumble recipe because I love apple crisp. It's one of my favorite recipes to make. It's a really great dessert, and honestly, you can eat it for breakfast also. I feel like apple crisp gives you the flavor of apple pie with a lot less saturated fat and also sometimes less sugar. So I think I'm gonna start using that crumble, crumble recipe also because it's gonna help me to cut down on added sugars and added saturated fat. If you think about a recipe that has crust in it, if you make a traditional crust, you may use Crisco and water and flour, or you might use butter and water and flour. Now the Crisco, a lot of times is gonna be sort of an unsaturated fat, but butter is definitely saturated fat. And the Crisco can sometimes have trans fats in it. And those are the types of fats that are not heart healthy. And they're really those types of things that we should limit. So I really like these crumble recipes or a crisp recipe because it sort of gives you the same flavor without all of that saturated fat and some of those trans fats. So I think that that's a really good way to do it. Also, one of the things to remember is that I sort of mentioned it in my recipe last month when we were talking about um, making the spaghetti squash. And I had put some, there was tomatoes and basil in it. And I talked a little bit about how that recipe was a really good way to use some tomatoes that were sort of a little bit mushy and they were a little bit past their prime. One of the ways that I really like to use fruit or vegetables that are sort of, they've been in the grow, you know, in the refrigerator just a few days too long, you cook them. If you cook them, you won't even notice that the texture has changed a little bit. One of my favorite ways to do that. So on the bottom of this is some um, bananas. And uh, this is a really great recipe to use some bananas that are a little past their prime. So like this banana, in, for example, is a little bit brown. Some people, I will, I'll eat this banana, but some people don't like it like that. But if you take the banana and you put it, it's on the bottom of this pan. And if you put it in here and you cook it up, you will not even notice that that banana was maybe not as fresh as it once was. And you can do the same thing. I was talking a little bit before about the leftover vegetables that you have from dinner the night before. Maybe you have them from a few days ago and maybe they're just not as fresh as they used to be. If you cook them and you put them in your eggs in the morning, you're not even gonna notice that they're a little bit past their prime. So just because that they're a little bit maybe mushier than they were, as long as there's no mold on them, there's no danger in using them in your food. You, you absolutely can. And it's a really great way to cut down on waste. My husband and I always like to make the joke, like sometimes we'll make onions and peppers. I love that. And we'll be using, we'll say, oh, we better cook these peppers because they're not as fresh as they used to be. We cut them up, we throw them in the pan, and they're delicious. And we go, oh, we cooked them right in time, just in time. We got those vegetables and we were able to eat them. So it really cuts down on some of the food waste. I hate to throw things away if I don't need to. So anything that's a little bit not as fresh as it used to be, use it in a recipe and cook it, and you will not even know the difference. So I hope that these recipes have given you some ideas on how you can make half your plate fruits and vegetables and a good way to add more fruits and vegetables to your breakfast meal and a way to add some more whole grains to your breakfast by making half of your grains whole grains. Don't forget to join me next month when we'll be making zucchini stir fry. Zucchini season is right around the corner. So this is a great recipe to use some of your summer squash and zucchini. Any of you who have a garden in the summer, if you cook or you grow zucchini or sp summer squash, you'll know that at some point you end up with so many of them, you don't know what to do with them and you have more than you can use. You end up uh, giving them to your friends and family and things like that. But this is a good way to use some of that up. Now I'm gonna be back with another edition of What's Cooking with Wendy on Friday, May 28th at 11.30 a.m right here on the New York State Office for the Aging Facebook page. This presentation was funded by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and this institution is an equal opportunity provider. I think that I'm gonna end up having some of this oatmeal for my lunch, and I can't wait to, I haven't had a chance to try this yet. It's great. 
And it's not too sweet. I really like that about this. Mm. Don't forget to join me next month, guys. Goodbye, everyone. Stay safe out there.